Yeah, it takes a is a family, also family on earth and family in Christ uh, to make that thing happen. So praise God and glory to him. And uh, let's go to the sermon. Give me a minute. Okay, here we go. We are in uh, John, the gospel. We continue in chapter 4, 27 to 42, about the Samaritan woman and how Jesus helped her. And eventually, through this lady's trust in Christ, many Samaritans led to Christ. Uh, that's uh, some people said is the first cause cultural uh, evangelism. Jesus was the first one who did it. He shared with his uh, Samaritans who are very different from the Jews. Anyway, uh, let's uh, read this. Okay. Leslie, can you read it for me? Okay. The whole thing. Just then, his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with the woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to, to the town and said to the people, come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have, have a saying? It's still four months until harvest, I tell you. Open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we turn, uh, as we open the Bible, we pray that your Holy Spirit will work in our hearts and strength, uh, give us spiritual insights so we can walk with you and do your will while we're on earth. So bless the time, bless the one who share, and bless those who listen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, we last time we spent a very long time talking about how Jesus purposely went through Samaria, Samaria to reach out to this lady uh, cross-culturally. Um, very abruptly, he asked for water. Uh, usually they don't do that. Uh, because of gender and also uh, the Samar Samaritan didn't get along with the Jewish people. So, but Jesus uh, broke this barrier that and shared with this lady about he is a Messiah, he is a savior. He gives living water that leads to eternal life. He gives God, he, he man the broken relationship between man and God. Through his sacrifice on the cross, he broke that barrier and we can enter into his presence. And he lives in us and give us an ending supply of God, godliness and God's presence, uh, and God's help. So that's uh, what we studied last week. And this week, uh, then continue the story 
when the disciple came back from town, uh, Sakar, as the, the Bible said in the, the first few verse of chapter four, Sakar is a town in Samaria, and um, there's a well there. And they returned because they went there to buy food, to get some food for Jesus and for themselves. So when they returned, they surprised Jesus was talking to this lady, uh, and then and Jesus uh, used this opportunity to teach them some important spiritual lesson. So Jesus is just grab any opportunity and object matter to really try to help everyone around him to know God's will and God's uh, God's uh, heart for this world. Uh, next one, next one, please. So when they returned, they kind of surprised Jesus was talking to this woman. And the, and the woman got so excited, left the jar. That's kind of important to her because she was got, she got so excited about knowing Jesus. And she rushed to the town to tell other people about Christ. That, that's already a miracle. She was a lady with a bad reputation. She went to get water and at noon is so hot. You know, usually people don't go there at noon, uh, either in the morning or later in the afternoon. But she went there because she didn't want to associate with anyone. People laugh at her or talk about her, gossip about her. So she was uh, anti-social a little bit. But after trusting Christ, she was changed. She got so excited about Jesus Christ that she forgot about her shame in the past. And she went to share with this probably elders in the town, religious leaders. Uh, she had nothing to do with them in the past, but now she got so excited about Jesus and she went and testified that this guy might be the Messiah that we have been waiting. He told me everything about me in the past. So, And Jesus, uh, well, then, then the, the Samaritans started to believe, started to get curious and went to see Jesus. And Jesus shared with them all these uh, Samaritans. Eventually, at the end of the story, uh, they accept Jesus. Instead of who the woman's word, they accept Jesus, who Jesus teaches. I want to Focus on a few things Jesus said here, verse 32. The disciple asked him to eat, and Jesus used this opportunity to teach them something important. He said to them, I have food to eat that you don't know, that you know nothing about. Jesus sometimes, if I were following Jesus at that time, I would be so scared of talking to him about anything. He said he can use it to teach you and uh, to kind of throw questions to you. To, uh, you sometimes you lost. If I were the disciple, say, "Oh, what are you talking about? We got food for you now." You said you you already ate or something, or you're not hungry. Or I have food already that that, that you know nothing about. It's like whoa. So Jesus knew the needs. They care. Maybe they still care about so much about this physical world. And Jesus wants to tell them there's something as important as food to God, to him. It's very important. Even more important food, more important than spiritual, uh, physical needs. Then his disciples said to him, each other, has someone bought them food? Verse 34, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And uh, this is, uh, to me, this is one of the very touching uh, verses in the Bible. Jesus summarized, uh, that's his life purpose. That's like his, that's his calling from God. He, my food is to do the will of him who sent me to finish his work. 
not just to start his work, but to finish his work. His life is to do God's will, to obey God. Food. Every day we say eat food. I think about food all the time. Uh, I pray uh, before meal. Uh, food. And this morning we woke up, we feel about food. What do we eat? What do we drink? I drink coffee. And uh, I ate food. Right? Most people think about food because it's necessity. This is everything that we need, every, everything that we look for. But Jesus used that to teach us. It is important for him to do the will of God and obey him. Not just to start to doing it, but to finish it, to complete God's calling and plan for him on this earth. That's important as food, more important than food. That's, that's what he wants to know. It is something we have to learn in our lifetime. I don't think all of us catch this already. It is, this is a very high standard. All you care about is doing God's will and finish his will. Wow, that's a high calling. But we don't want to go the opposite direction, right? We don't want to, my life goal is to do my will and do whatever I like and don't care about God's will and calling. That's the opposite direction. Hopefully we are heading towards this direction. Oh, by God's grace, God help me. Help me to know the importance of, of your plan and your will in my life. That you, are you choosing me as a vehicle to accomplish your eternal will on earth. Wow, what an honor that God's calling you to help him out, to finish, to to accomplish something he wants, he wills to accomplish on earth through a vehicle, an ordinary noble person as you and me. Who, who are we? We have nothing spiritual input for God. It's only through God's grace and your obedience. If you're obedient, you can become God's vehicle, God's vessels, just like this lady, Jesus. God called Jesus to preach to her. She was saved. And many Samaritans were saved just through Jesus' obedience. Purposely went through Samaria and purposely shared with this lady. Do you have a life purpose? Um, we, we are Christian and definitely we are saved by God. And um, hopefully we are challenged too to serve him and to do his will. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Jesus, that's Jesus' purpose and Jesus' call, his obedience, his submission, and his determination to finish the Father's plan for him. Even if it was very tough in the the night before the cross, it was so tough. He prayed that the Lord take away this cup, but not his will, but your will be done. And verse 35, open your eyes and look at the fields. Um, verse 35, let me, let me read. Don't you have a saying, it's still far, uh, four months until have harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps and draw wage can harvest a crop for eternal life, so that the sow and the reaper will be glad together. And thus the saying one sow and another reaps is true. I send you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have worked the hard work, have done the hard work, but you have reaped the benefit of the labor. So he just introduced them. A harvest to the disciples. He, he, in verse 34, he said, I am determined to do this will and finish God's call on me. And now I, I encourage you to do the same because I hope you catch the vision that the, this harvest, spiritual harvest is right, is ready to, to be harvest. There are works to be done. You know, 
it is just time sensitive. Conference is time sensitive. Uh, you don't go to you don't hire a group of labor uh, uh, workers when the fruit is already ripe for a long time. Every you're doing yourself a, a, a you bring yourself a lot of trouble because a lot will be rotten, a lot of will be not suitable to to be sold. So is we have to do the harvest at the right time. I think the matter is is ready. They have people ready for you to share Jesus with them. And you will be so surprised they respond. We don't know with the Holy Spirit, how he works. We, we cannot tell which one is ready to you can pretty much tell which which was not reopened, but you you cannot tell who will be listening. Uh, sometimes just like me, I, I mean, I was the least uh, my my brother, my friends expect to come to Christ, but they pray for me, they invite me. I'm surprised, uh, and they were so surprised that I accepted Christ that night. That's the work of God. So the point is, he's talking about spiritual harvest. He's not talking about uh, uh, very clearly. He's talking about eternal life helping people to enter eternal life because the harvest is eternal, half is a crop for eternal life. What else is talking about? Not talking about building a church, not talking about uh, helping the poor. He's talking about help people to enter eternal life through the gospel. That's his point. So he said, we are charged to do the harvest because ready. Is ready. If you miss the opportunity, you regret. You regret. Um, so open your eyes, look at a field. So that's what Jesus uh, encouraged the disciple. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the field. Let me pay attention to spiritual matters around you. Don't just care about physical needs and world and entertain them. But there is stuff God needs you to do for him. Only you can reach out to that person and be sensitive to God and the Holy Spirit. And also be ready. It's a different when you're not ready and you're ready. When you're ready, you, you said, oh, Lord, help me to do it. But when you're ready, you say, ah, I'm too tired and I don't want to do it. I don't care about those people. Uh, I have enough trouble. I don't want to care about others. So when you're ready, you think this is from God and it's important to God, important to that person, as important to you. And you would determine to do it, even if it costs you, even if it's not easy. I forgot to bring my iPods, iPad, so <laughs> I have to use my phone. Sorry about that today. Anyway, uh, that is, okay, open a spiritual, your spiritual eye and look at the field. They're right for harvest. Jesus invite us to catch the spiritual vision that many are ready to be harvested in the God's eternal kingdom. Look around you. Is there anyone God is asking you to witness for him? And um, it's a matter of life and death. Uh, we cannot control whether the person you share will come to Jesus or not. But I would say the Bible said, Paul said, that you are charged already. If you don't do it, you, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're passing out God's assignment to you. Um, so something we have to put in our checklist as every Christian that you're equipped with the gospel. Lord, I'm ready. The harvest is plentiful. My relative, my uh, husband or wife, my children, my grandma, my co-workers, my neighbor, everyone, 
everywhere around us, there are people who are lost in sin and they're going to hell, seriously. I'm not trying to make it gross, but if they don't have Christ, it's eternal. Either you go to see God eternally, blessed by him, or God will judge you eternally. It is the most serious matter to anyone. But your friend, your relative cannot come to Jesus who are Buddha, who are Muslim. They don't get it. But we are already in Christ. We got the gospel. And Jesus charged us here to share. It's ready. Don't wait. Time sensitive, urgent. You better do it. Otherwise, the opportunity may go. The person die and you'll regret for a long time. I, I had that feeling before. I, I, I was so, I was lazy. I was uh, reluctant. I was, uh, I, I don't want to embarrass my, myself or something like that. I just uh, keep kind of uh, disobeying God to, to share with my grandma when uh, many years ago. Uh, I didn't really share with her. And then she passed away. I feel I felt so bad about it, and I didn't do it. I didn't. I I can share the gospel clear to her. I don't know if she would believe, but I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I, I up to today, I still regret. I still regret I didn't do it. But I learned from the lesson. I don't want to repeat that mistake in my life. I share. I don't feel I I have a. My face is. <laughs> I don't have, I don't care about my faith as, as much as before. Like yesterday, I, I saw Dinah's, uh, Dinah's sister a few days ago. I asked her to go to church, I said, go to church, come and, come and listen to the gospel. I don't care what they feel about me. Ah, this guy's a pastor selling insurance. That kind of stuff. I don't care what they feel about me, but I want to grab every opportunity to sow the seed. And let them know, hey, Will, you're welcome to my church, to this church. Uh, just like your sister well, accepted Jesus. Come just listen and see what good gifts she find. You know, how you feel is, is totally irrelevant to his eternal destination or that person's eternal destination. I will, I don't care. If you love at me, fine. If one day you find Jesus, I will celebrate with you in heaven. That's okay. So next slide, please. A many Samaritan from that town. Uh, Leslie, can you read that for me? Okay. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his word, many more became believers. They said to the woman. We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Thank you. So this lady does accept, well, trust the Lord, like very primitive level. She just started to believe this is the Messiah because supernaturally he told him, told her, told her all her past. Uh, but she was so excited about Christ that she went to town to share. And they believed. They started to respond to the gospel. That's why Jesus said, harvest is ready. I will be surprised. Even a Samaritan come to Jesus. The Jews didn't back then, right? The Jews rejected Christ, criticized them. Uh, persecuted him, uh, the, the, the Pharisee. But the Samaritan, they think they are uh, second class, they are mixed race, blah, blah, blah. They despise the Samaritan, but to God, they are as precious as any Jew. They respond to Jesus, God's word, the spiritual conversion. So don't underestimate one person. One person can lead many to Jesus. Seriously, just like, thank God that person shared with us that we become Christian. And, and I will be totally 
different if I don't have Christ in my life. I thank God for that that person call me that Easter morning that he invited me to the gospel meeting. I praise the Lord. One day when I meet him again in heaven, I, I give him a big kiss. Don't underestimate. And I don't, don't give excuse that I'm a young Christian. I cannot share Jesus. I don't know theology. I don't read the Bible that much. But one thing you have, you experience Christ. Just like that lady. I experienced Jesus. I, 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 I was uh, impacted by what he said. And it changed my life. That's what you can share. And no one can argue with you. Right? That's your personal experience. It's subjective. But it is your experience. It's like you you got you pray to God, God answer a prayer. And people may not believe what you said, but that's your experience. You can share about it. If it's real, God can use it to increase that person's faith in Christ. So don't underestimate. Don't say, oh, I need to do training. Yes, training will be wonderful. Yeah, I need to do this and that. Yes. But most important is your heart, your willingness to do it. That's the first step. That's the ticket to enter into this harvest. It's not training. It's a heart, a vision that you see they are ready. They're dying. They're going to perish. If you don't reach out to them, they will be lost. God doesn't want them to be lost. And you are charged by him, God to do the harvest. So we are called to join the harvest to collect eternal soul to Jesus Christ. And um, why don't we pray? Our Lord, we want to respond to your passage. It's not just head knowledge. We pray for ourselves. Oh God, charge us, help us to be more uh, sensitive to your prompting. Every time you want us to share with some people, oh, give us the courage, give us the um, love from you that to love them and share Jesus with them. They need Christ. That's, that's the only two ways in this universe to be blessed by God or to perish. God help, help us to even sell your gospel to people. Even they laugh at us, that's fine. As just Jesus said, uh, it's okay. Um, um, I pray for this congregation and all of us in our daily walk that this is uh, gonna last in our spirit. That's something that gonna kind of you put in our heart every day. From this day on, Lord, help us to share the gospel because the harvest is ready. There are people who are dying and need to be saved and help you and Lord help my brother and sister and me to be faithful and to be willing. A uh, willing heart is the first step. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. 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 Thank you.